Ask and ye shall receive. This is a game I've been asked to review for quite a long time now, and it finally made its way into the schedule. It's a challenge reviewing Sega Saturn games, especially North American Sega Saturn games, as reviewing only good games on the Saturn tends to be very hard to do, because what will happen is you'll be left with dozens upon dozens of shovelware and crappy games. So I have no choice but to mix and match quality games with subpar games. And the good news is, guys, Legend of Oasis is a very good game. It's fun, and, well, it's worth a look. Legend of Oasis was released in late 1996 and is actually the prequel to Beyond Oasis on the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. Players take on the role of Leon, who must search high and low for six elemental spirits and use their combined powers to defeat the evil wizard Agito and restore peace to the land. Okay, I know you've heard that story about a million times before, but this game does have it where it counts. It's gameplay. Nostalgia time! I was a huge fan of this game back in the day because unlike the rest of the world, I loved, and still do, 2D games. Back in the mid-90s though, if your game wasn't 3D, it was automatically crap. Simple as that. Reviewers found every excuse under the sun to label 2D games as garbage. Very few people looked at games like Legend of Oasis and thought, wow, AAA killer app. Why I mention this is because it was completely ignored back in the day. Much like Guardian Heroes, Legend of Oasis would find a huge following many years later. Now, I'm not going to directly compare the two games, and I am actually critical of The Legend of Oasis because I feel it needed a few more gameplay refinements in order to hold up to the test of time. For one thing, let's talk about the presentation. Sure, the graphics look nice here, and the audio features some great music and sound effects, but does this game really, truly show the power of the Sega Saturn? And the answer is, well, not really. There are certainly some awesome effects here and there, and the scaling and 2D rotations can be really nice in spots, but I never found it to be as impressive as Astal or Guardian Heroes. And I think the biggest problem has to do with the camera system and the way the levels were designed. It makes it extremely challenging to determine how high platforms are from one another, making the platforming elements feel cumbersome. And that's even after you get used to the control scheme. They're not horrible, but I feel like Ancient, the developer, could have done a little bit more here, and for the most part this really does look like its Sega Genesis counterpart, although it's been much more refined. The overall feel of the game is pretty much exactly that of Beyond Oasis. Yes, the graphics are certainly more refined, like I just said, they feature better animations and crisper frame rate, but to a lot of people, this did not seem like a next-gen release. Now, I will admit that the soundtrack by Yuzo Koshiro was great, and still is. It's actually fantastic, much like the original Oasis game. So let's move on to the gameplay. Well, for the most part, you move around a village talking to people before heading out to a different dungeon. All of this is done from one main central hub, which does limit the game's overall feel because it feels much more restrictive and small compared to something like A Link to the Past, for example. It certainly gets bigger as the game progresses, but it never reaches the level I thought it would, and I'll admit, today I was surprised by just how quickly you can finish the whole game, which is about five, maybe six, seven hours, something like that. The weapon and magic systems are all fairly standard, although you have access to six special spirits once you unlock them. These spirits act like guardian forces that have a wide assortment of awesome abilities. There's one that controls water, elemental attacks, one for fire, earth, sound, darkness, and finally air. You both directly and indirectly control these spirits. You're able to use their attacks, but they also float around shooting enemies and protecting you by themselves, which is kind of cool. And this system actually holds up really, really well today. They also assist with environmental and story-related obstacles, which is quite nice. There is one issue I have with the gameplay, and that comes in the form of the weapons. I just find you're a little too weak at the onset of the game. 
Using the dagger to take out a mouse, for example, requires you to stand there and hit the tiny creature half a dozen times before it's defeated. This changes as you get stronger, but at the beginning of the game you do really feel unbelievably weak. A good technique is to learn how to master new abilities, which will then certainly make you feel more powerful. The game uses a combo system like you'd expect to find in a fighting game in order to perform a wide assortment of special moves. Double tapping forward allows you to run, which is fairly standard, but if you equip the wand for example and you press forward back forward, you will actually perform a very powerful lunge attack. You can also jump kick and just so much more. So while you do feel weak at the onset of the game, you're actually quite capable, you just gotta learn how the system works. The bottom line is The Legend of Oasis feels more like Beyond Oasis 1.5 than a full-blown sequel, and if you're a fan of that game, you're absolutely going to love this one. Now since I haven't played either in years, this one played great outside of a few of the issues I mentioned already. I can understand why so many people were perplexed with this game back in the day because of just how closely it matched its Genesis brother, but coming back in 2016 to revisit it, all I can tell you is that I had a really good time with this action RPG and it's certainly worth a look if you can find it at a good price.